The Sun was born four and a half billion years ago. And this is a real simulation of the process, run on a supercomputer. Stars form from giant clouds of gas collapsing under their own gravity. You see these real lines of kind of gas, what we call filaments. And these filaments kind of collide together and they contract under their own gravity. And it's when these filaments interact and make dense gas, the dense gas is what collapses and makes stars. The thing is, suns aren't born alone. They're like puppies, they come in litters. So out there in the galaxy are lots and lots of the sun's brothers and sisters, and astronomers are keen to find them. Keen because the sun's siblings might give clues that eons ago, in a star system far, far away, life spread from Earth to other planets. But more on that later. First, what would one of the sun's siblings look like? Well, you need to know a little about the life of a star. Size pretty much counts for everything, and that's determined at birth. It's a bit like life. All the stars are born equal, but some are more equal than others. Some of them are born into a rich household. Here's a nice rich household here. You're in a rich family, there's lots of gas. Gas is star food. The more of it around, the bigger the star can grow. So these stars are going to run away to high masses and gobble up all the resources from themselves. For example, some stars can be 90 times more massive than our star, the Sun, and they burn furiously. And high mass stars also have all the fun. So massive stars are the real rock stars of the galaxies. They live fast, they die young. They burn up their fuel in just a few million years. Compare that to our sun, which will take billions of years to burn its fuel. And the big guys, known as supergiants, end their days in massive supernova explosions. But it's a very different life for stars with a low birth weight. For a start, they're booted out of the nursery. You're already a small, low-mass star. You get kicked out from these violent interactions and then there's no more gas around, so it's like you're in a poor family. These poor and small outcasts become red dwarf stars. Although there is a plus, they take trillions of years to burn through their fuel. And that brings us back to the sun's lost siblings. Some will be red dwarfs and some super giants. But the giants would have long ago self-detonated and the dim dwarfs would be more difficult to find. So, astronomers in Texas have been scouring the skies for siblings that look more or less like our sun. And there should be plenty of them. We know that most stars are born in clusters, so they're not born alone, but in, in groups of thousands or, or tens of thousands of stars. But unfortunately, the brothers and sisters are unlikely to be anywhere near our sun because stars are nomadic. You can see why when you look at a galaxy like ours. So this is the Whirlpool Galaxy, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's one of the most spectacular yeah. spiral galaxies we see nearby. The dark regions there are where the stars are first forming. Yeah, so you can see that by implication. You can see just out of those dark regions is where you get all these hot, bright stars. These newborn stars spring out of the densest regions of the cloud. The gas around the star forms a disk. And out of that disk, the planets form, creating a star system. The galaxies the star systems are born into are spinning. The rotation jostles the star systems, turning them into nomads. So they can actually be just randomly knocked aside as the objects begin to move together through the galaxy. And over time, they get whittled away as one star after another begins to leave, just wander off on its own path. The Milky Way has spun 20 times since the sun's birth, so the siblings have spread right throughout the galaxy. Finding them now is as tough as spotting a random person in a crowd. Now, if you were looking for a lost human sibling, you'd match them with a DNA test. Well, something similar can be done for two stars. Check whether their chemical makeups match. The stars that are born from the same gas cloud must have the same proportion of different chemical elements in them. 
And so the last step of this search is to do a detailed and accurate measurement of the chemical composition of stars. So far, only a small patch of our galaxy has been searched, the nearest 100,000 stars. And astonishingly, a single match has been found. This star that we found uh, is a little bit more massive, 15% uh, more massive than our sun. Its temperature is probably a couple hundred degrees warmer on the surface. So it's actually not that different from our sun in its properties. But its name's certainly different. HD162826. <laughs> it is, it is pretty boring. Unfortunately, when we deal with hundreds of thousands of stars, we cannot name every single one of them, so we, we go to numbers. <laughs> the big question is, could our sister star system have life like we do? It would support a theory known as panspermia. Panspermia is actually an idea that's been around for a couple of centuries. Basically, a large rock ploughs into a planet that has life and blasts debris into space. Now, the key is that debris contains life. It travels through space, lands on a planet far, far away and seeds that world with life as well. It's a way life could spread through the cosmos. People have been thinking about this in the case of our solar system that perhaps life from Earth has traveled to Mars, or that perhaps life on Earth came from Mars or other planets. And panspermia could have been operating in the sun's birth cloud, when all the siblings were very close together. So the distances between stars are not that far away as we see today. So it is also possible that some of these rocks that escaped either from Earth or from Mars travel to a different star. And if the rock is big enough, it could have kept this basic ingredients for life as we know it here. In other words, we could have distant relatives in far-flung star systems. If that's true, then all these other solar siblings are also good candidates to, to search for life outside of the solar system. In the coming years, new space telescopes will be scouring the skies and we should be able to find most of the sun's lost siblings. With a bit of luck, we might even uncover evidence of some of our long-lost space relatives. <laughs>